Hi everybody, my name is Emily Hunsaker. For my disease presentation, I will be teaching you all about Candida albicans. Candida albicans is in the kingdom fungi. It is in the phylum Ascomycota. The class is Saccharomyces. The genus is Candida and the species is albicans. Candida albicans is a dimorphic yeast-like fungus. Dimorphic means that Candida albicans can be present as a unicellular yeast form or a multicellular pseudohyphae form. The yeast cells measure 10 to 12 microns across and it is gram positive. The form it takes depends on environmental cues, switching to the hyphae phase based primarily on temperature and pH changes. Major components of the cell wall consist of fibrillar, polysaccharides, and proteins. Some chitin is also present in the cell walls of Candida albicans. The cells may form aggregations uh, called biofilms, which is usually seen on dentures or inserted surgical devices. Candida albicans ingests host byproducts like dead tissues and sugars from food. Candida is especially resistant to phagocytosis, which may be a factor in its pathogenic virulence. Candida albicans reproduce asexually by budding. The buds do not separate from the mother cell. Instead, they form a chain of cells called pseudohyphae. Candida albicans produce blastoconidia spores formed from the buds of the parent cell. Candida albicans can switch between different phenotypes, which is an organism's observable characteristics based on its interactions with its environment. The change is spontaneous and reversible. In one form, the microbe appears white with round cells and smooth colonies. In another form, it is opaque with rod-shaped cells and flat colonies. Antigen expression also changes, and the two phenotypes seek different tissues. This flexibility makes it highly adaptable to environmental changes. There are over 150 different species of candida known to man. 20 of these species can be found commonly infecting humans. Of these species, candida albicans is most commonly found. Other common species that affect humans are candida tropicalis, candida glabrata, Candida crusai, Candida parapolosis, Candida oris, and Candida listania. According to the Center for Disease Control, Candida oris is an emerging fungus that poses worldwide health problems. Many cases of Candida oris resisting antifungal medications have been reported. Candida gabbrata is also known to be resistant to antifungal drugs. Candida may be found infecting household pets like dogs, cats, and birds in similar ways as it affects human beings. Candida albicans helps make up the normal microbial flora and alimentary tracts, like the digestive tract, and mucous membrane surface such as oral, vaginal, and gastrointestinal of humans. Candida albicans may also be present on the epidermis. Someone who is immunocompromised or has an off-balance of microflora in the gut is at risk for developing an overgrowth of candida albicans. Yeast and fungal infections caused by candida albicans commonly affect premature infants, diabetics, AIDS patients, surgical patients, and patients being treated with broad-spectrum antibiotics. Candida albicans is not affected by antibacterial drugs. Because of this, people who are taking antibacterial drugs are at a higher risk for developing candida albicans overgrowth when normal bacterial microbiota balance is compromised. Overgrowth of candida albicans in humans is called candidiasis. Candidiasis affects numerous areas of the body. Candidiasis of the mucous membranes of the mouth is known as orpholangeal candidiasis, or thrush. Esophageal candidiasis occurs when a candida albicans overgrowth develops in the esophagus. Vulvovaginal candidiasis, or a vaginal yeast infection, infects the mucous membranes of the vagina. 
Males can obtain this through intercourse, though it is not commonly infecting males as it does females. Cutaneous candidiasis is a skin infection, usually found in the warm, damp areas of the body, including in between toes, fingers in the webbed areas, armpits, groin, under the breasts, and other folds of skin. Invasive candidiasis, called candidemia, occurs when candida enters the bloodstream, which can become systemic. Chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis is a rare form of candidiasis that mostly affects newborns and will continue throughout adulthood. Symptoms of oral candidiasis, or thrush, include a white fuzzy tongue, foul breath, sore throat and gums, difficulty swallowing. The symptoms of thrush are very similar to the candidiasis of the esophagus. However, the symptoms of the esophagus will be heightened as the candidiasis spreads from the mouth to the throat down the esophagus. The vaginal yeast infection symptoms include intense, itchy, intense itching and inflammation, heavy white discharge, soreness with urination and intercourse, or redness around the skin. In Latin, candida literally means white, which is why in all these infections, you will usually find a presence of a white colony. Cutaneous candidiasis, sim candidiasis symptoms include a red spreading rash, intense itch, bumps, and oozy pustules, Infected webbed area between the toes or the fingers will become white, soft, and often breakage occurs. In the United States, candida, albicans, candida albicin infections of the mouth and throat can be found in 30 to 35 percent of young adults. Candidemia is the fourth most common bloodstream infection of intensive care unit patients. The distribution factors for candida fungal skin infection include warmth and dampness of climate. Other factors may include gender, being about 75% of women will suffer a vaginal yeast infection complements of candida albicans in their lifetime. 45% of these women will experience more than one episode in their lifetime. The distribution of candida albicans is found worldwide. Um, the, the distribution in the United States is very similar with the distribution around the rest of the world. Treatment of candidiasis depends on the area of infection and the severity of the infection. There are many tested and approved over-the-counter and prescription antifungal drugs to treat candida albicans overgrowth. Fluconazole is one of the most common antifungal medications to treat oral, vaginal, esophageal, and bloodstream candidiasis. It can be administered orally or by injection. There are many other over-the-counter antifungal creams listed here on this slide that you can find at Long's Drugs or Walmart. And they're all very similar. Alternative therapies for treating candida include the candida diet, which is a diet that works to eliminate alcohol, simple sugars, yeast, most dairy, and processed foods from the diet. Because candida albicans thrives off of byproducts of sugar um, ingested by the host, this diet is very effective. Probiotics also help to repopulate the gut microflora with good bacteria to help restore a natural balance, which will inhibit the overgrowth of candida albicans. Antifungal herbs such as polyarco and uva ursi may be effective at inhibiting fungal growth. Topical application of tea tree oil, apple cider vinegar, or coconut oil may also have antifungal effects. Prevention methods for preventing overgrowth of candida albicans include maintaining a, health, a healthy diet low in simple carbohydrates. Maintaining a healthy balance of intestinal flora, maybe by taking a probiotic. Good hygiene. Wearing cotton clothing, changing your socks and underwear, often when working or living even in damp and sweaty conditions. Avoiding the overuse and abuse of antibiotics when possible, but when taking antibiotics, always accompany them uh, in between doses with probiotic. 
Remember, candida albicans lives in your gut and in your mucous membranes. It's part of a normal, healthy microbiota balance in your body. Knowing the symptoms of candida albicans outbreak and overgrowth in your body can help you to, to get it under control before it becomes systemic and causes even more health crises.